In this tutorial in Microsoft Excel, I'd like to show you how to do data validation using a dependent list. Basically, what that means is if you have a column and you control the data with a drop down list, you can put a column next to it that will control a subclass of, of data. Let me give you two examples. The first one over here on the right side is we have a, a category where we're going to put in animals. And my animals are restricted by a drop down list. And if I click on the down arrow in this um, in the cell, it's either the dogs or cats. So that's what I have over here. This is my drop master of my drop down list. So I can pick either dogs or cats. Those are the only options I have in this particular column. And obviously, I could pick a, a lot more options than that. So we'll just give another one here. So that is something we showed in an earlier lesson how to do that with data validation. Nothing new here. And if I want to uh, show you how I put it together, let me click on any of these cells. And I'll click on Data, Data Validation. We Our settings are set to a list. And the source is E2 through F2. In other words, I'm going sideways here. So my two major categories are the ones in yellow. I can pick dogs or cats. And I could have this be a lot wider. I could have 50, 20, uh, 30 selections if I wanted to. So that's the data validation controls of this list here. I'll click on Cancel. And so that's the options I have. And these in this column H, so I can only pick dogs or cats. But here's where the power comes. Now, once I pick a dog or cat in column H, I click on breed, and I've got data validation here as well. And now I click on the down arrow. If I click breed, it goes under the dog column and gives me one of my four there. If I click on cats, it goes under one of my cat columns and picks the one I can select from there. And back to dogs again, only what's in the dog column. And back to cats, what's only in the cat column. So these items are dependent on the items to the left, all controlled by drop downs. Really nice feature. Let me show you what you have to do to set this up. This part we talked about in another lesson, and I just showed you an example of it. But before you do that, in the second column, you have to define these as a range. I have to give these a name. So my cats are defined as F3 through F6. My dogs are defined as E3 through E6. And these don't have to be the same length, by the way. We'll show you more about that in a minute. So if I go to my formulas and my name manager, here's my name manager for cats. And I'm going to edit it so you can see what it is. My cats are on my sheet validate month and day, F3 through F6. OK, so that's that defines my cats. It won't work unless you define these in your name manager. And the name you define these as has to be the same as the name up here. So that way it will work. Same way with dogs. If I take to look at the dog section and I edit that, my dogs in my name range is defined as E3 through E6. So these are my dogs. OK, so once I've defined it, I'll close it out. Then I put a formula in here and copy it down. Let me show you the formula. I go back to data, and I go data validation. And the formula is I use a list. And the source is I use the formula indirect. And then I use H3 here, which happens to be the cell immediately to the left, the way I've set these up. Uh, so you ref this cell is referring to the indirect of this cell, which controls the name up here, which tells it to look down here for the options. And likewise, on uh, the next one, we'll cancel that out. 
We'll click the next one down where I copied it. We'll go to data validation. And the list is the indirect here of H4. So the indirect says go to this named range called cats, which happens to be up here and uh, use the item under the items under that range to define the options in the second list. Let me show you a pretty practical way to use this data validation. Now we're going to move to the other side of this screen here. Right now here I have month and day and each month and day is controlled by a drop down list. If I click here, we'll change it from July to any of the 12 months of the year. I'll go March and I'll click down on, on the, in the day range. It'll give me a range of up to 31 days in March. Now if I change the second one, say to February, and then click on the day range, you notice that I only have, there's no leap year in this one, only 28 days. So it limits uh, my day entries according to the number of days in the month of the column to the left. So I customized it. I used the same process, but what I did was I'm referring not to this table, but to this table here, where my first column is looking for each of these, and I've named each of these the same thing in my um, formula names, my name manager. And then I've named each of these starting in column two to the last date in that month to the range uh, that I'll be using over here. So if I look at the formula here, it's really identical to the formula in dogs, but it refers to the second sheet. I'll go to data validation. It's a list. It comes from my months and days tab and it's cell A1 through L1, which, which was my January, February, March, April, May on the other sheet. And so that's the first column. Cancel that out. And then I'll go to the validation tool for my day and I'll click on that one. And that's the indirect of the cell immediately to the left of it. But then again, I've taken every one of the 12 months and I've defined each of them uh, with a name using my formula, name manager, and here you see all of the 12 months in here, February, Jan, January, July, June. And so they're all defined but I had to define all of them to make the formula work. But it's a pretty easy way to guarantee that if I click on March, I'm not gonna put in the wrong number of days because my options are limited. Same way with February. Uh, if I do September, it should limit it to 30. And I'll go down here. And once again, it limited it to 30. That's the maximum I can do in September. So that's kind of a practical way that you can use um, your, your criteria in your data, your data validation tool uh, to create a list in one column and a dependent list in a second column.